Hello, and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our campaign as the Great Horde. We're at war. We shouldn't be building buildings. I don't know why I think it was, I was thinking to do that for a second there. Silver tech advantage. We do. We are very close to having another point in tech advantage. It's not going to help us out too much because we only have two artillery. Um, so it's not really a big deal, but might actually hold off on that one until we get the next institution. Speaking of institutions, how does the printing press look these days? The Ottomans have it in their capital. They have not yet embraced the printing press. It is spreading fairly quickly. It is sent up 1.86 per month. Should be present in 74, so in about four years. And we got 80 up here. These are the only two provinces that I care about because they're going to give me the sh spread. What else could we do that would cause it to spread? You know, by friendly, adjacent, capital of country with Diptech 15. Diptech 15, that's a long way away. Okay, so that's not going to happen. Province is Protestant, that's not going to happen. And European 20 development capital. Alright, so where exactly is the border for Asia? Um, there used to be be a more clear way, I thought, seeing it. Continent Europe. Asia starts over here. Our capital is technically in Europe. So if I had 20 development in my capital, then that would give me some points. European 20 development capital. It's not going to be a big issue, right? Because it's not going to be very much spread. We don't have very many points to actually even do the development in the first place, but it is pretty damn cheap. And it's a zero development, or a zero, zero autonomy province. There's no way that I can reduce autonomy, or development costs, because we don't have the burgers. Um, step. Can't get rid of. We already have the Renaissance. Like, rather than paying the ahead of time penalty, I am kind of tempted to, to do some development. But it will also buy up some spread rate. There's a really interesting uh, post on my subreddit where a guy actually did some crazy calculations to determine the best starting development to use as a, as a province to buy up an institution. Turns out that 16 and 18 development are the best starting points for the overall cheapest um, purchasing of an institution. It's pretty cool, pretty interesting math. Go check it out. Arumba.com. No, it's not right. Uh, Reddit.com slash Arumba07. Or you can actually go to arumba 7 slash reddit.com. Either one will work. So, should we do development right now to try to get the institution? I don't think so. How much would it how much would it actually give me? Two per click right now. I mean 11 is not 16 is part of the issue. I don't want to move my capital, I think. Our capital right now is in Astrakhan, which is not really the best trade node. We've got a merchant in Indus. Steering inland, and we got a merchant here trying to bleed it up into Astrakhan, which makes sense, makes sense. This says to Aleppo, which I can't do anything about. Um, or Muzz I can't control. And I feel I feel like the merchants are probably in the right 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 spot. We're gonna want to move downstream. So Kiev could be an interesting node to move into. Um, possibly skip Kiev, go straight to Novgorod. Wouldn't be too bad. Let's check the ledger real quick. I just want to see. How are the trade? Oh, let's actually use this tab. I use this one a lot more these days. Um, even though it's not sorting properly. I figured this out and made a bug report. Um, when you click the sort by value, it's sorting by the incoming plus local minus outgoing. Even though the number that's important here is actually incoming plus local. When you go to the ledger and look at it from the ledger, you actually can sort properly. This actually does support it the right so sort it the right way. But um anyway. Lubick, Genoa, Baltic Sea is pretty high. Baltic Sea is surprisingly high. That's one and we might skip Novgorod, go into the Baltic Sea. I mean eventually we want to get all the way into either the English Channel, um, Genoa or Venice, but Yeah. I mean we're about to gain a whole bunch of points in Novgorod. How much wealth is there in the Novgorod node right now? 13 versus not much in Ostracon. If we had our trade capital in Novgorod, we could steer in, um, we could just steer in Crimea, get the inland route bonus towards Kiev, 
and then steer toward Novgorod up this way. This would pretty much happen automatically. This happens from this direction automatically. The only thing we would miss out on then is here. So some of this money would end up going this route, which then just would immediately bleed into the Ottomans' income. So that, that part's bad. We would need an extra merchant to really make, make good on it. But anyway, let's focus on the battle. Uh, <laughs> I got distracted and just like looked around at all kinds of stuff that wasn't battles for seven minutes. I apologize. Okay, so how are we going to do? We got a five versus a, a two in the first phase. He's already weakened. Look at that. He hasn't even had a chance to reinforce his regiments. Are you completely out of manpower already, Mr. Muscovy? Yes, he has no manpower. He's got mercs. So it takes time to reinforce. He didn't shift consolidate. He is actually flanking me slightly, but we have cavalry cavalry combat ability. It's far superior to theirs, and their infantry is quite weakened. We have a slight discipline advantage from our horde unity. A little bit of a morale deficit, but we have a tactics advantage due to technology. And we rolled quite well, and most importantly, the shock phase, a 7 versus a 3. That is going to be a big crush. This army is heading back to reinforce. Good, 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 good. He's not going to make it in time. He'll be there on the 19th of January. All well, of our diplomats are tied up for the annual tick. Good, good. Nice 11 versus a 1. I'm so glad we renamed a province after this guy. And he's decided not to reinforce. Perfect, good, good, good. Um, so that means no ticking war score for him. Positive 4 war score for me. I need 6 more war score from battles to get a ticking war score. Uh, it's not flat terrain. We don't want to go that way. Let's just kind of march west. Actually, let's 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 hang out uh, in this general flat region in case he tries to come in and do something. And of course, that army did not have a chance to get down there in time. I'm gonna put the other guy in charge for a moment. Put this guy in charge over here. He's gonna be more likely to be in combat soon. And the Oirat are having such a bad game. Okay, now that we have that there, we can pull the cav off. I want those cav to go and join a combat stack. So that should be 9 infantry plus 1 cannon. Perfect little siege stack. And, uh... I mean, while these armies are distracted and far to the east, I could try to sneak in and get, like... Uh, Tiver, Vladimir... Occupied. Mm, we can go for one. You know what would be a really cool paradox if you could make it... I, I've asked I asked for this a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> and I still think it'd be a really good idea. An auto move when siege complete Q button, right? So I want to be able to tell him to go to Vladimir and then as soon as the siege is done, go somewhere else. Like, complete your siege and then go somewhere. I want that button so bad so that I don't have to pay attention to every little army. Like... It, it, I still think, it seems perfectly reasonable that I should be able to say, like, Hey guys, hey guys, hey my military man, my, my leaders, I want you to, uh, you know, go ahead and do the siege, and then when you're done with it, I want you to do something else. But no, 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 it's too complicated for the game, I can't possibly give them more than one set of instructions. Okay, our royal marriage has already ended, wow, Murad III is dead. He has a, a 463. He has a... Oh my god, even his freaking consort is this amazing. A 463, and then his heir is a 546. I want to play as the Ottomans. <laughs> god, the Ottoman government form gives just incredible generals. Or, sorry, incredible leaders. Alright, it's going to take us... the 15th. I, I want to know the distance between these two provinces. Which one's faster to reinforce from is what I'm looking for. Okay, that is an army that I want to fight. Would you please march that into some flat terrain possibly? Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know, Kazan would be nice. I'm going to convert it right now. What is he trying to convert it to? It's currently Sunni. I'm Sunni. I would prefer if he did not do this. They are at 20% progress. And I knew that that was going to fire, and I knew that he was going to need help, and I don't have an army in position to help him out, sadly. But, uh, we will s sort of soon. We're going to leave one guy behind, and... Hmm... 
We're gonna send the whole army over there. Whoa. It's actually leaving our vassal's territory to go over to another location. I wonder why. Does that province that he spawned in not actually have uh, a Shun core? It does, so why are you leaving? Why not just sit there and siege it? Curious. Okay, looking at a claim pretty soon. We can give it provinces we don't own. That's actually pretty reasonable speed now. Song. A little bit of unrest over there. The calm separatists are at 10%. 20 years presently. I think we could probably convert that. Fast enough that it won't cause any issues. Yeah, should be safe. Okay. Losing a little bit of money. Still paying to root out corruption. Still waiting on overextension to go away. Still can't core that province, amazingly. Seriously, I cannot believe how slow you are coring. No, please don't cancel the... Did he already cancel it? I think he did. Oh, you idiot. Just because they have a siege. Yeah, I guess he probably... Why did the... When, when rebels occupy a province, it doesn't stop the progress. Like, it just sits there. Why does the AI cancel their coring progress? Due to rebels. It's wrong. They don't need to do that. Nice, we got a wall breach. Ardalan now has an alliance. Does that mean you're not a protectorate anymore? He's managed to embrace the Renaissance. Yeah, he's not. Interesting. He is in a province that's woods. Administrative monarchy is fine. Are you serious? Are you serious? This is the second time! Well, actually, this is probably for the best. This is a 204. I was probably, I was thinking to murder him anyway. I just wanted to see what his personality was. I guess it's better that we didn't lose. Oh, come on! A 122? Why would you give me such a bad guy? I hate my generals, I swear. They're so bad. I don't really want to be on negative stability, but I think we can hold off until that happens. I don't need that extra guy there. We have Vladimir. Trade efficiency. Oh, that's useful. Super good. <laughs> we now have a disaster uh, building up. Civil war due to uh, having overextension and having no stability. We can invest in the military tech. I think we're going to skip that for now. He has moved back to flat terrain. We can grab our better general. We can grab our, our weaker army. You are going to need to march over and join another army. Okay, roughly equal sized armies, and he is still behind on tech, and we are in flat terrain. He's got two maneuver, so let's come in from this direction then. Avoid the river, hopefully. And July 5th, July 3rd, nice, cool. Force, please. End of this month, July, okay. Commonwealth is going to really kick his butt. He's got negative 49 war score against the Commonwealth right now. This should be the battle that gives us the ticking war score and probably also puts him down to low enthusiasm. And if we can occupy his capital, we're already going to be able to take a huge peace deal. First phase, we roll a 12 it back. I'm so tempted to rename an extra province after you. That's an amazing roll. Uh, I mean, he followed up with a zero in the second phase, but that's still pretty damn amazing. Look at that. We lost like 2,300 to kill 9,000. Five war score. Still, sadly, still not quite enough. Actually get a ticking war score, but... Close. Very close. Ooh, autonomy decreased expiring is very nice. That is the opposite of recent rebellion. Oirat has just embraced <laughs> the Renaissance. Good job. Alright, the tribes. We cannot recruit a minister from them until 75. We could support them, give them some money to buy up more loyalty. I mean, they're pissed that I'm not giving them territory, but I'm still I'm not going to do it. I think we hire a level 1 advisor for now. Try to save some money. Fort defense? No. We'll go for the discipline advisor. Um, I hate this general. I'm going to go ahead and turn this policy on before I forget. And we're going to make him into a guy. 
turned into a 1-3. Not very good. Okay, Poland, rather Commonwealth is going for the forts that I want. He already occupied Yaroslav. He's probably going to take at least most of these provinces with claims on them. What's your aggressive expansion look like, Commonwealth? Zero. Great. Yeah, I don't know. This this other army is just like head, headed off to, to who knows where. Because our vassal has still a fairly sizable rebellion. Wait, no, it's it's actually just the eight stack. I guess the other army got probably knocked down by Ming. Losing a claim on my vassal is not a big deal. We can get our claim on Delhi. And then stop fabricating on you. We can probably top off relations with our other vassals. We've got room for growth with Punjab and Cardell. And our capital siege is looking decent. We did not get up here in time to catch that army. I want the ticking war score. So even if I have to, like, track his army down in some woods, I'm willing to go fight it. Let's, uh... Let's, for now, leave behind seven troops here. And then we gotta have to cross a river. He does actually come to reinforce that. There's plenty of loot to be had here. Might as well park the armies up there. We are good at looting. Even infantry get a bonus to loot speed. Alright, uh, I will help you out with this even though you can probably handle that on your own. Okay, I have no claim on Oirat yet. This army is probably going to attack the Oirat, I think. Oirat has only the one level fort. Supply here is pretty high, we can march that army that way. I apologize, I, I feel like I'm switching map modes a lot more often lately than I used to. It's kind of like psychedelic, but um, there's just more stuff that I need to see. I need to see claims, I need to see territories, I need to see um, simple terrain, um, I need to see development for claims. I, mean, I just, I cycle constantly. Hey, it's this guy again. I need my ticking war score, please. You have, oh my, oh my god, Commonwealth. Why, I don't, I don't want Wasteland to be colored. He's gonna retreat up here. Can't get to that one, but I can get to that one. I'll probably retreat to that one, knowing my luck. Okay, um... Listen. <laughs> It's like, why can't I loot this? It's because it's my land. <laughs> uh, that's funny. You are going to be... long spot. Take the capital. Let's do it. Nice, we got it. Cool. That gives me free reign up this way. I've got no other forts up here. It's just this one, and then these two, and then this one that we're already working on. So, I guess we come around from the top and we go for some occupation. That, I think, might be his entire army now. No, there's got to be at least one more. That's only 2,700 infantry, and he's showing much more than that. There's one more army somewhere that I am hoping to be the one to fight. We have a rebellion at 80%. It would be the Kazaki Separatists in Dzemhamenene. All these provinces over here. Okay, Horde Unity, the negative stability. Have we finished the cores yet? We did. Buy back stability. Okay, 
penuria på strängarna tumma. Hmm. Where's in 78? Yeah, I don't think we need to really worry about that one too much. That is the army that I want to fight. It's marching to Vyatka right now. I'll be there on the 21st. My army... This is pretty much all Cav, isn't it? Let's take those two back. Let's pull one of these infantry off. No cannons in that stack. These guys are just looting. Which is useful, because I, I need the money, but... Um, I don't see an opportunity to really put together a 12-stack very quickly, unless I break this siege for, for now. Which I think I'm willing to do. Let's leave behind the cannon and a, a, an infantry. Pull these infantry off. And then send these infantry over. 5 plus 1 plus 1. That's going to be enough. Then let's kind of shuffle balance these armies a bit. Still don't know if it's going to be enough to catch him. I'm on the 11th already. 16th. And I can't get up there. Darn it! It's all for naught. Can't get to him. Name a ticking war score game! Nice job there. Suffering 5% attrition. Poland really doesn't want to, you know, solve their financial issues. They, they, they're desperate to go into debt. <laughs> Did four loans so far. I mean, I have to imagine that's a pretty sizable amount of debt. In fact, let's see, you're allied too? You have no allies. I can't check your debt. I can't check your actual direct number. We could, we could approximate it. But I don't see any purpose to that. Let's start on another siege up here. I think we might as well, because it, I'm getting the impression that this war is... Uh, I'm not going to get a ticking war score. I sent one of my cannons up this way. Uh, let's see. Ah, shoot, that zone of control there. Hang out up here until that fort falls. It should for fall pretty quickly. A negative 57 war score against Poland. He's got to end his war soon. He's coming through Tura. He might actually end up fighting rebels. He doesn't have any colonize colonization ideas. He, no, that's not true. He does have a colonist. He has taken the... I don't know. I don't know how to tell which policy he's taken. He might end up fighting rebels, is, is the thing. If he doesn't have the policy that reduces native uprisings, then marching through unsettled land causes rebellion. Ah, shoot. He's just hanging out there. All right, can we get to it? Let's go fight that army if I can. And oi rats. And Poland. So not a lot of very good provinces to choose from. Five development seems to be about the highest I can reach. This is occupied by the Commonwealth. That is not my land. That's Muscovy. So I can't claim that. I can claim. I guess we claim Bryansk. Yeah. And since we're already at war, and we already have our maintenance at full, now is a pretty ideal time to actually do this war with you. You're going to pull in Hai Chi, who uh, currently is dealing with rebels. Interesting to see that he would actually honor the call while he's got those rebels. Negative, ah, four reasons. He's in debt. It actually doesn't show that he's at rebels. Let's wait then. I think what's happened is that these rebels just spawned, they just sieged a province, and they haven't reached another province yet, so he's not getting occupied and besieged provinces from rebels. No, he's not. Let's wait, like, a month or two, and hopefully they move on to another province, and then the... Aichi would not honor the call. It's like Baluchistan's gonna become independent soon. 
hästar, vagnar och karrener vid var. Okej, okay. well, um, it's kind of, kind of a pretty straightforward simple war, isn't it? Even though we're gonna go fight in the mountains with a negative two penalty here. He doesn't have enough uh, troops to cover his cannons, so one of the cannons is going to end up in the front row. We're flanking pretty hard. We got a tech advantage. And uh, it's just infantry versus pure cav, so... Despite the flanking, we should be fine. The question of rights. Seed a land... Seed, okay, I could take a province from my vassal. I could take Hakilik. Because I have my claim on it. Now, he's already cored it. I don't want to pay admin points for it, I think. Probably do want to just integrate it at some points, and it's an 88.6% autonomy province. I'm not going to get any benefit from it. I uh, just lose my claim. I don't need the claim. Alright, this should finally give us the Ticking War score. Delhi seeds lower Doab- oh my god. So that was a punitive war led by Delhi, and Delhi just got wrecked. They cede land to Vijayanagar, so you're you're going to have even more aggressive expansion now. Good lord. Gondwana cedes land to Orissa. Bengal cedes land to Nepal. Multan returns core to Kathiawar. Kathiawar. Okay. Delhi has been forced to release Patiala and Rohikhand. So Patiala and Rohikhand. That's like 28 development that he just lost. And he lost his core on Patiala. This is a uh, Hindvi culture, so it looks like he kept it. Yeah, he only accepts Panjabi and Avadhi. Wait a second. I'm confused. He accepts Punjabi. Why did he lose his core on Patiala then? There's nothing in here about renouncing cores. Am I crazy? I feel like this is backwards. I feel like he should have kept the core on Patiala, whatever it is, and should have lost his core on this one because this is Hind Hindvi and he doesn't accept Vindi. It's in his primary culture group. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's confusing me right now. Whatever. So anyway, these guys are at peace is the thing, and we were going to make them into protectorates. We are at war, so now we can't offer. Come on, game. Stop. Stop it. Stop restricting me on doing stuff. You get this with a cannon over there. There we go. All right, cool. I'm going to take a break here. Next episode, we're going to end this war in glorious fashion and uh, call it good. So for now, see, uh, I'm going to take a break here. I'll see you again in the next episode. So I thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.